this brother, when he treads, nations, hear what I'm saying? Nations tremble wherever this brother treads. And he's been patient in the background. But brothers and sisters, we're dealing with International Women's Month. We're dealing with the health of the woman, the mind of the woman. And it's my pleasure to introduce onto this platform, Dr. Walcott. He's one of our greats. He's one of our favorites on the platform. I'm praying the brother is still there. Lord gosh. Dr. Walker, are you? Oh, there he is. Oh, my God, brother. I have to apologize. No, it's You've right. been waiting, brother. You've it's been right. waiting. And on behalf of Hidden Truth, we apologize, brother. No, but we've still got over 430 people on laptops. It's probably about 800 behind the scenes. Brother, we are waiting for you like no other brother that we've waited for, King. How are you doing, soldier? Sir, I'm so delighted, you know, to be listening to the works that you're doing and all the other sisters. It's, it's really it's so much to be said about that. Is it okay if I just relax a bit? Relax, brother. Relax, just, brother. Um, okay, so... Ta brother, what? brother, take off, take off your shirt, brethren. <laughs> on, this ain't no play day. Take off your damn shirt, man, and relax, uh, I want to thank you, brother, for what you're doing. You know, I can see the timeline because I'm not going to go into our history, but man, you come a long way, you know, and really, I want to say this before I get going, before I forget. I'd like to get some of your books that you've written. I want a pile of them in my surgery, and I'm going to make sure that every patient that I've got gets one of those if they haven't already got one. So let's arrange that immediately after the done. show tomorrow, whenever done. they have that. Done, done. Um, I want a bunch of them. You let me know how much it is. We sort it if you want to give. Oh, well, be nice so, between me and you, man. Sure, don't, we don't talk right. about anything. We don't right. about okay, anything. so we want to do that. Um, Because I think your book is phenomenal. And I haven't heard even educated historians speak about some of the subject matters. But hey, today what I saw was phenomenal. Um. Okay. Um, Sister um, Lady Wisdom. Come on. Um, I want to make a very short statement about her. I'll first say that I commend you um, for your delivery, okay? Eat. Really commend you for your delivery, okay? Um, Come on, Bubba. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. She, she's outstanding. Um, I've never seen outstanding. anything. I've never seen anything like it. Believe me. Ever. Ever. Because ever, ever. because I, I'm a psychotherapist and I was trained in Oxford by Dr. Georges Phillips, who I recommend a lot of people to, and if you can still get him to work, he's quite old, but he would be the best person for most of our traumas. But um, Sister um, uh, Lady Wisdom, was she done, if you notice why she Jeez, was speaking, brother, come on, man. why she was speaking, she, you could hear the tears, but she's oh. already cried so many tears. She knows she won't get the message across if she starts crying live. Come on. But you could hear it was a crying story. She, mm -hmm. she, she managed with practice, of course, to deliver the message so she doesn't, Thanks. so she doesn't win the, um, the battle, but lose the war. So she Come wants on. to get the message and she somehow managed those emotions and that phenomenal. Phenomenal. Come on. Um, uh, I, I have too many Come stories. On. I want to say to Sister Lady Wisdom, that's it. Lady Wisdom, two things. One is Peter. the sisters that you met that say to you that no, it wouldn't happen, etc. I heard when you say it, said that. Um, uh, one, point one to you. Many of them have gone through worse. The difference is they haven't got the build the make the ammunition and remember brother andrew um packed you with you know enough um you know um uh, principles inner principles that made you have the you know um what you call toolkit to take on some of the things you've been through but some of the sisters that haven't come forward and been able to express the stuff the way you did is because they haven't got those toolkits and if you think back to when brother andrew you hadn't met and he hadn't given you those tools, you would never have been able to do what you did. But what you did was phenomenal. That's phenomenal. the first thing. The second thing is that, um, uh, right, so there is partly the sisters that are in, um, what's it called? It's, um, so 
When you speak about stuff like that, I will tell you now with an absolute certainty that at least 50% of the women on this platform right now, and the one that, ones that I haven't even heard this tonight, they fall into the same category. They've been there. They, been they, there. Some of them still going through it. And guess what? You're the sounding board they don't want to hear. So you're the enemy. So they go into um, either defense or they go into um, uh, denial. That's the one. Defense or denial. But in any case, your words and your expression won't get, they won't reflect upon it because it's trauma for them. They're still going through it. I had one case where the, um, in Harley Street, a patient came to me with a weight problem. And um, as we got through to the solution of the weight problem quite quickly, she then revealed that she was raped by her father. And then she started comfort eating, et cetera, et cetera. But then she revealed, she said something abnormal happened to me during that phase. She said, he started abusing my younger sister. And I, on one occasion, pushed the door and saw him, you know, abusing my sister. And she said, I became jealous. And at that point, she said, I knew that I was very unwell. And then, um, you know, she realized she needed to have to address it clinically, you know. And so it, 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 it became a, 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 mon a giant, a monster that made her eat and eat and eat to comfort herself out of that trauma. But I, I really commend you, Sister Lady Wisdom. And I would send, I would send patients to see you. The thing is, the thing is, the funniest thing is with patients that have some of these traumas. Um, one is a lot of women don't want to go see women because they think women are judgmental, especially if they're highly professional. With you, um, uh, it, they will feel more comfortable with you. Yes, yes. You know, I, I think you should go more further in the field and I'll be willing to help you. Woo, yeah, that lady wisdom. Yeah. That's the number one doctor. I'll be willing to help you. To send you patients that I, I know would definitely grow a lot with you. And one of the biggest healing tools in this type of therapy is acceptance. And you've done that and you're still doing it. Thank you. That's amazing. That is amazing. Right, now, without further ado, I wanna say thank you for inviting me yet again. And I wanna thank all the attendees and the great work that brother Andrew again, I must say is doing. And um, those people who are attending in the UK or anywhere else in the rest of the world, I want to say thank you. Brother Andrew, I, I, I reflected upon the name of uh, this, this presentation over, overall, the making of the Black family. And yeah, and, and sir, I, I, I became so, um, I suppose, um, not, not just inspired, emotional. Wow. About what it really means. And, and uh, you know, eventually I end up talking to someone, a woman, about this subject. Think. And it went on for the streaming for about half an hour. Think. And she was just head down, just listening, listening. And then I realized I was streaming. I was, so I'm going to bring back some of those things that came through when I was talking. Because um, here it goes. So the first thing is, the making of the black family hit me with the word making. I was like, mm -hmm. hang on a minute. What do you mean making? We already were made. This is a remaking of the black family because we, we, taught, we taught families around the globe how to have a successful family, you know, unit and family structure. And so this is a remaking because um, a name you're probably familiar with, Willie Lynch, did quite the opposite. And his project was called The Making of a Slave, right? <laughs> the Making of a Slave is the epitome of where we've landed as a people. The epitome meaning that's the foundation of where our destruction came from. The Making of a Slave was primarily um, to dismantle and... Uh, dismantle and to break the philosophy, and the, the cultural modalities of our black um, structure. 
and that was especially in the home. So um, Willie Lynch decided that what he would do is break the man. And so he had them quartered in the squares and the women to watch men, their men, the most powerful men in their community being quartered. Quartered meant that they would tie their four limbs to four horses or two horses and have them pulled in opposite directions. And so they would be quartered and they'd make sure that the women stand in the square to see it happen. They would have to observe it. That was a True. must. True, that, was, True. That, that was the actual um, injection. That was Come the, on. that was the, that was the, um, uh, I want to say serum, but really it was a toxin for the women. And Willie Lynch said, when he does this, this will make the women be frozen with fear so that they would never make their males, the strong males, the boys, the Kunta Kintes, to think about running away or becoming a strong black male. So that emasculated the, the men, even the mothers had to emasculate or bring down the power of their male, male children in order to survive. And that was the type of message that Willie Lynch and those uh, brutal murderers, um, that's the sort of method they use. Now, where I'm going with this is, since that time and now, we now have a post-traumatic slave syndrome um, going on and still the nuances of that um, syndrome. We're, I'm seen in the surgery, we're seen in our family lives, um, we're seen in our parents' family lives, you know, um, the traumas that, um, you know, saying, I think maybe it was today in the surgery or yesterday, that, you know, I've seen in the Caribbean, in Jamaica in particular, the way that we brutally deal with our children, like, for example, I don't know if Jamaicans have seen some of the things I've seen. I know we've been beaten with sticks and this, but I've seen in um, the countryside in Trelawney, where um, I lived, where I grew up, where children are tied to a tree and beaten with a stick, tied to the tree. And you can hear them screaming, mama, mama, oh God, mama, oh God, oh God, mama. I've seen this. I, I can't count how many times, not one or two. It's just, it was, you know, depending what bad they did, that would be the punishment, they tie them. So this type of brutality, um, even when it was watered down generations later, we still found a good mother who would not tell her children she loves them. I love you, a big hug and a kiss, I love you before you go to bed was not the normal tradition of the slave trauma, the, the, the syndrome that we had developed. And even when we started to heal, there was no love. It was just hardly decent. Um, so we've come a real long way. And um, if you look at even our mother's generation, my mom's 86, granddad was 104. So if you look at the timeline of this Willie Lynch, um, you know, making of a slave, he called it. He said that this will create a cycle that unless there's a, like a Messiah, he said like some phenomena, the word he used, he said, quote, unless a phenomena occurs, this will cycle on itself forever the way he's done it. So what he did was destroy the male figure in the um, structure of the family. And so, um, mm. so by doing that, we, we found that the women had to take the, the role of the leaders and the head of the family um, because men couldn't stand up on both feet. They would need to stand up and maybe one or stay on their knees, and that would work for that society. Unfortunately, for centuries, we're talking hundreds of years, the women had to play that main role and male role. And um, then when the so-called slavery was abolished, then the men tried to get back on their feet, but mostly they were stump legs, they couldn't stand up properly, and they, some of them preferred to stay on their knees by then. And unfortunately, the ones that stood up and 
were able to be to present themselves as the remnants of the strong men that was left in our society. What happened, what happened then to them was that the then society decided that they would have to take them out of the out of the uh, equation because then we would rebuild. So then what we saw then was that most of our strong black men became uh, arrested or um, incarcerated for anything that didn't really matter. And then the remnants of those who weren't incarcerated and arrested, I mean, even, you know, our beloved, um, you know, great, um, you know, master Mandela, he never got time to spend any time bonding with his family, he spent most of that in jail. But he was a leader, I'm talking about just strong men. They'd find ways for any, any reason, anything, the Jim Crow, anything that those laws would just put the strong men in prison. And so we were still left with a with a uh, uh, what you call a um, uh, we're still left with a with a community a broken community, and then unfortunately we then had the weaker men populate our societies, and that's now what we call unwanted progeny. Unwanted progeny means they're having children not for the sake of having children, they're having children for the sake of having sex, and so that became the prominent feature in our societies. We mostly had children for sex. Now. Um, then our families from the Caribbean came to, to, to places like England and America. And then we started to formulate what made us got, get married was the formulation that said, well, if you get married, you might, it might be easier for you to get a flat or we might be able to, you know, because we got marital status. And so a lot of black men and women then got married, but for the wrong reasons, even then. So we've had a long journey of a broken people. And now that brings me to even more recently where we see, hmm, we, see um, uh, we see the uh, molestation and uh, aggressive, um, abusive behavior by the police who um, uh, searched that young 15 year old and uh, disgracefully. And I wanna go here for a minute because I know that it's um, the obvious, it's wrong, it's racism and so forth. And we've never got anywhere even going and demonstrating, you know, George Floyd, we demonstrated and, uh, it, it, you know, we might've made an inch, but we don't seem to get in anywhere just demonstrating. And I think they know that and they set for us demonstrating, knowing that that's not gonna get us anywhere. We build ledger centers, we send boys out to play football, go to the ledger, get them out of the house. It's not really working. What's missing is we have the missing link of real men, real fathers, real dads. Um, and we have, um, for example, with the Willie Lynch effect and what's happened with this young woman is, for example, I think the greatest thing we've lost in our um, cultural modalities is that spiritual modality. And when we are intact with our spiritual modalities, we have a dress wear, we have a, um, you know, um, the manner in which we speak and how we have respect for ourselves. These things become like a prominent feature in our behaviors. And we see um, when that also started to happen in America, we saw Elijah Muhammad and you know, Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, we saw that they started to instill or reinstate the respect that was missing within the black community, especially within the black males. And so, and the black females have all, had also lost their integrity. And the word for the black female wasn't power. That was a male. For women, the, the power full, the word is chastity. And so there's nothing that makes a woman more powerful than her chastity. And so the nation of Islam started to instill and reinstate these things within the community. We then saw black men starting to call other black men, sir, and my beloved and brother. And the language changed from what's up my nigga. And so that changed the way we felt about ourselves like, um, uh, you know, uh, Sister Daniel was saying, 
you know, our own personal integrity is what we reflect on others and how we would communicate with others. And so the nation of Islam started to rebuild the integrity within the black man that was missing, that it's, it's gonna be impossible. I, I'm sorry to use words like that, but I'm hardcore hitter as well, like Sister Danielle, she's phenomenal as well. She's ridiculous. And the thing with Sister Danielle, she needs to write the book or books. It, it has to be done. Um, um, and so they have to be done. The books that she has to write the books Teach. and so that the school that brother andrew is you know propounding and building that they will have access to a library with come on brothers and black sisters who wrote those books come on um so with the with the young woman that was searched you know um um with that disgraceful with those disgraceful police officers I'm leading up to saying what Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam did by reinstating and reinstilling those behaviors in the, our community, that our language changed, our behavior changed, our dress wear changed, here we are. Now, I, I'm not saying, I'm actually not a member of the Nation of Islam, right? So I think this makes my point more, more significant. But you see a hijab, a spiritual dress wear, something that signifies that you're not just a dropout in your community because you're lost, that you believe white supremacy and that you need to get a job on MTV in some Bati riders and some Pony printers, right? So um, when you lose that self-respect, then all the people around you, especially your enemies, they lose self-respect for you as well because you've lost it for yourself. And so how we dress has a lot to do with that. I believe if those officers were around saris or hijabs or around Punjabi suits where these cultures have more chastity around our women, then I think it would have been, it's not that it wouldn't be possible, but they would have thought twice about it. Um, and the truth is there's probably women saying now, we shouldn't have to wear a hijab, a sari or a Punjabi suit or African outfit for, you know, a white police officer or police officers to not abuse us like that. And that's the truth. However, we are in the land of our enemies. And um, unfortunately they taught most of us to be the broken way we are as a broken nation. And so we can't follow their narratives anymore. We have to do for self by reinstating the decency within our community, the men first and foremost, um, now, now, what I loved as well about Sister Daniel is that, you know, after Sister Lady Wisdom spoke of the atrocities and of the, you know, demonic behavior within the black community and the men within our black community, even after that, she was able to speak in a very balanced way with how we come about with a solution. The solution is not demonizing a black man more than he is, because that won't work. The solution is not get some white men and so we'll, we'll, we'll find balance with them. That won't work. The solution is to reinstate the black woman in the position she truly deserves to be and she was created to be in. And that brings me to the subject of um, making of a family, making of the black family in regards to medicine um, and health and wellness. It was the black female. And in fact, females around the globe in all nationalities, cultures, and traditions, it's always the females that are the custodians of health within the home. And I do mean particularly within the home. That then got extended to hospitals and, and clinical spaces because the female touched the women. Um, even till today, many people are more feel more secure with a female doctor than a male doctor. Now, in the home, it was always within African culture that the women looked after the family. And that came from God because the Most High gave us, you know, the, the women's, um, female's breasts as a symbol of nutrition. And so um, you could look as the nutritional custodian of every family should be the females of that home the mother would teach the daughters how to also um, take those posts, those positions in the home. 
Um, now, it's, it's interesting how in the bushes where we have the bushmen and we have the, you know, the bush doctors, um, mostly the women weren't doing that because the bush meant there was dangers, there was animals, there's insects, there's all sorts of stuff. So it would be the men that went out into the bushes. There were a few shaman women, of course they are. And there are traditions and, and, and tribes where the women actually went into the bush as well. Probably the Maasai tribe and, and, and Zulu tribe were their warrior women. But generally it, the women were the um, custodians of health. They were in charge of health in the home. If we have to translate that in our modern day society, um, it would mean that the women would have to be trained or retrained. And that's where the word Sankofa, it's actually within their spirit, it's within their nature, it's God given. So you don't have to, you don't really need a degree for it. They used to call it old wives tales because no woman went to university for that. Mom taught you and mom taught her, grandma taught her and auntie taught her and so forth. But the point is in our modern day society now, what has to, should happen is we should uh, reinstate women as the custodians of the healers of health and wellness, the nutrition, nourishment of the home should be in the, the, the health that should be in the hands and the control of the woman of the home. Even if it's a girlfriend or a partner, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be married. Um, marriage doesn't have any um, <laughs> marriage doesn't have any security against diseases. So it really doesn't matter um, if, if you're just in a relationship, you should allow the woman to hold that post. It's a post that the Most High has blessed her with. So in the kitchen today, where you'd have a garden back in Africa or Jamaica or Caribbean, St. Lucia, or Barbados, you know, um, a garden with herbs, fresh herbs and stuff, you know, thyme and, you know, all the ginger and all the stuff that we would have in the backyard, in the garden, mom's garden, not dad's garden, that's mom's garden. That's where she picks her stuff. And then she wants some of the more dangerous stuff. She walks further out of the garden into the further part of the yard. And there's some more serious stuff out there. She knows where that is. So in the kitchen now today, it should be translated as, you know, we have the women know that in the cupboards, we have the spices, but those spices are absolutely in, in, you know, in, uh, invaluable herbs for healing from so many diseases. Simple things, bicarbonate soda, um, you know, um, black salt, pink salt, um, turmeric, ginger, you know, thyme, um, you know, uh, uh, all the herbs literally are medicines, all of them. And of course, some of the unique ones to have um, nowadays would be charcoal, um, you know, um, neem, you know, to kill worms, papaya seeds, you know, um, just all this stuff should be in the kitchen and the woman should be in charge and should know how to use them. Unfortunately, it's a big ox at the moment because sometimes woman's breadwinner, sometimes the woman has to do the cooking, the cleaning, and sometimes the woman is the only parent. And so it becomes rather difficult. So I, I then propose that we put on a um, training course where we um, bring women, you know, like a thousand. My, my plan was to get a thousand women. And if we can't do it as a training course, do it as seminars where we, uh, we do an induction where these are the things you must or should have in your kitchen. This is how you use these, this, this is how you use these things. Um, and, and then make maybe a catalog that you know, women that reinstate themselves have that they can go through and know what to do in any crisis. Now, what this would do is take the immediate health issues and some of them are not serious, they're ailments. And some of the ones that got serious with the men, which I'm coming to in a minute, the, the women could have solved it at home. What this would do is take such a big responsibility that we place in the hands of our general practitioners, our GPs. And I, I, I speak to a lot of GPs and they're not, they're not secure. They're not secure with their own job. They're not secure, they're not happy with what they're doing. Mostly what they say to me, because I'm so open, they open, they, they just say, yes, it's true, it's true, it's true. 
um, we only get five minutes with a patient, you know, um, and we only have this much drugs we can prescribe for any given situation. And then we have to write a letter and send them for screening or testing or for, to a specialist to look at whatever the suffering is. So, um, you know, we can save a lot of lives by returning women to having the understanding, the science of the, you know, um, healing properties within the things in a home, in the kitchen, or possibly in the garden. Now that brings me to the men. Um, the men needs a different type of healing. And um, I did say that they threw the most of the powerful ones in prison. And so even when we re, when they when they resurface, they need healing. They some of them is irreversible. Um, the trauma done to them in prison is irreversible. And it's by design that they do that to our black men. It's the new way of quartering the black man's psyche, emasculating. As soon as we get a, a powerful black man, they put him in a skirt, they put him in a dress, they emasculate him, they do something, they pay millions of pounds to make him look like, you're not so powerful a alpha figure now, are you? Even though you're the world, whatever. So this is a designed, Kind of effort to destroy um, the black masculine image, and it and it's because it 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 intimidates, um, because the black masculine image is automatically alpha. Now I, I don't want to give the black male any kind of um, false power at this point because I know loads of women out there saying, "No, my man in my bad mind, in feet that are the bad mind, baby father, right?" We know we have a whole lot of bad mind baby fathers out there, right? Some of them don't know how many children they have. And the ones that know how many children they have don't care how many children they have. And so there's so many stories about that. But again, the making of a slave was an effort that's still running. And the intention of Willie Lynch was that the woman would eventually hate the male in her community. And she'd prefer to take someone outside of her community because the males within her community, it was a given that they're broken, they're damaged goods, and it's gonna be a destructive journey. And um, for the better of that, unfortunately, for the most of that, um, for the most of that is true, but to deviate from our community is not the answer. Um, you know, there is a saying, well, let's go, let's go science. Let's go, let's go science on it for a minute. The immune system, when it becomes when it's when it's under attack, it doesn't disperse itself and find a limb to depend on because the left arm seems like it have a lot of muscle. No, they 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 conglomerate, they 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 unite, they they whatever happens, even if the body, even if we die, even if the immune system completely fails us, it does that while it's uniting and bringing their forces together. And so I believe there was a statement, I think it was made by 50 Cent, I think it was a film, it was called Die Trying. And I think we should do for self or die trying. And I have a book somewhere here, it's an aggressive title, it says alkalize or die, alkalize or die. And these, these are expressions that's coming from nature really, because nature has given an order how we should survive. And if we break that order, then we won't survive. So it's follow the order or die. You know, um, die trying, don't, don't give up on our nation. Um, Hearing Sister Daniel speak this evening was really humbling. Um, her eloquence, second to none. I don't know her age, but she's a young sister and that eloquent, you know, wow, start writing books. There's people writing books who are not half as eloquent as you are. They're just white. And I mean that with all, with all due respect to them. Um, so, um, so with regards to our building, rather reshaping and remaking of our nation and of our family structure, 
Oh boy, okay, so we're gonna have to re-educate the black man. Um, my God, okay, I'm gonna be real, like Sister Danielle, I, I hit hard with some of the reality stuff that it goes against me, people strip things off YouTube and uh, it offends. But here's, here's, the, here's the facts for me. We won't be able to achieve it by um, rehabbing the black men that's already broken. That's plus one, minus one. We're gonna have to establish the young generation with the nuts and bolts and links that's missing from our generation. And that can only be done through education and that can only be done through schools and that's why what brother andrew is doing is the singular most powerful thing that any nation no koja no kafre no imotep no one no yeshua unless he was just going to touch each person and make them whole again through some miracle it is impossible the singular most powerful thing that could be done to reinstate the black man where he he came from and give him back the missing link you know as uh you know brother malcolm x was saying you know one day when we wake up you know uh you know we'll be able to speak you know like the expectations of a black man when his melanin is shining like ten thousand suns right and so when your melanin is suppressed, then the way we're speaking now suppresses other parts of our black nation because we're not rising up ourselves, nor are we stimulating others to rise up. So I don't have much faith with the broken um, brothers. There is a rehab that could be worked out for them. Um, but I think the, 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 the investment the energy that should be spent and well spent should be on the, the, the generation um, that, you know, what they say was hidden from the wise and prudent is revealed to the next generation. Then we need to save them because don't think that our enemies don't know where the, the, the most perfect place to hit and where the most powerful place to garden is in the garden of our next generation. Um, they know we're in our whether it's 30s, 40s, 50s and more, they know we're in the evening or afternoon or midday of our lives. And so they know how to finish the game with us. They have transhumanism, they have all sorts of stuff, but for the next generation, um, you see Brother Andrew is showing the youngers how to participate in, in the new world to come. They have to be apps experts, apps geniuses. You know, I'm looking at how we build our own black, you know, um, Silicon Valley. And I sincerely mean that. I mean that so much that I'm convinced that um, a black Silicon Valley with the, with the and, and I'm definitely not racist, my grandchildren, literally every single one of my grandchildren thus far are mixed race children, grandchildren. So, you know, my grandson has blonde hair and one of my granddaughters have blue eyes, so I'm definitely not being partial here or biased. But I think if we have a Silicon Valley, you know, of um, people say, oh, you're being racist because you want a black Silicon Valley. Well, um, not necessarily. I want a melanin Silicon Valley because um, why are you, whatever your nation is, denying the fact that melanin has an added value to the human consciousness? And maybe if, um, don't mind me saying, if other nations had melanin, like our great brothers, the Jewish nation, maybe they would make sure that the foods they ate and the drinks and the stuff that goes in them was nourishing their melanin. Maybe when they say kosher and, you know, they do things to enhance their nation, maybe that's what we should be doing with how to enhance ours through utilizing the melanin in things like creativity, like Silicon Valley, my brother Andrew is starting to plant the seeds of that in his school. And I'm definitely ready to fund that school. And I wanna to speak to brother Andrew about having monies going into that bank account. I was trying to take a picture of it. 
I'm going to make it like just a regular monthly payment into your school's bank account and encourage people on my show and listeners to do exactly that. It, 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 it should be a given. That, that's the only way we can change this. The brothers coming out of prison, prison and the brothers being broken, the brothers being, um, I think the word is um, indoctrinated. Um, we, we, we're not going to save all of them right now. And the murderers, the rapists, the deviants, um, we're not going to save all of them all right now. You know why? I'm, I am being positive, um, but this is why. There's a saying that the abused become the abuser. And that statement happens to be still true. And so until we stop the ancestral sin, then as Sister Danielle was um, really, really amazingly, um, you know, outlaying the kind of progressive, you know, um, manner in which this disease continues itself, where a drunken grandfather is seen by the father um, and by the son. And then don't ask, but he becomes a drunkard father and beats his wife as well, just like granddad. And it may have another son, the grandson who become a drunkard, but he didn't beat his wife, but he beat his kids and abused them. And so you see these ancestral sins rolling forward into our current time and it has to stop as sister daniel was saying and it has to be done with such meticulous and with scientific and with um you know i would say with some some um super awareness um the abuse become the abuser and 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 then finally wow you know um hardly anyone speaks about the boys that's being abused and that includes the boys they also don't come forward and you know this has become a major you know has had a major impact in our community on the black male um lots of black males were uh were sexually abused in all the islands and it started with their slave masters, but then it continued with their family members because they started that evil and demonic, um, you know, behavior. And then just like alcohol, once you start drinking, then it's almost like the body adjusts and it gets almost like accustomed and used to and expects it. And, you know, Sister Daniel, I think, it, no, it wasn't, it was Sister um, Lady, uh, uh, um, wisdom because I was listening since the way lady wisdom you, and you're right some people don't I was listening to every decimal point and she was saying is that at times you know it becomes unreal it becomes surreal to the abused that they actually start to feel like they're they worthy of the abuse and that they don't feel worthy of a normal life and that they they, they, they miss being abused because that's where they fit in with what they you know theme is in their minds. And so boys went through this a lot in the Caribbean. And again, the abuse become the abuser. And so we had, um, we had young men who became fathers who abused their children, their boys. And, um, and then some of those boys tried to get married and have a normal life and abuse their wives or their daughters but abuse abuse became part of their experience or their children or family experience so while we're talking about the making or remaking of the black family we have to look at these nuances these are the nuances from our horror you know um uh, horror struck past and our nightmare past but like Sister Lady uh, Wisdom, we really have to use these very things to make us a stronger nation than ever. And there's a saying that the floor that you fall on becomes the very support for you to stand back up and, and, and ascend. And, you know, when we're told, hey, nigger, get down and give me an extra 50 to the other soldiers, 
you just done an extra 50 press ups, you're stronger. And so, you know, we have to work 10 times harder and so forth makes us a nation that's on its way to the most super excellence that we've ever seen within our nation. So don't look at the scars and the badges of the wounds and the trauma that we've been through that is gone for nothing. It's remaking us stronger than we ever have been and that our you know, transgressors will never be able to do that again. And that is more powerful than we were because clearly that we were taken the way we were tells us that we had some very serious weak links within our tribal societies um, that we sold out each other. And again, the spiritual, I wanna say finally, the spiritual modalities that's missing from our nation is not Christianity because we have a strong Christian nation. We have probably the most powerful Christian nation on earth. Um, it's not Islam. We have a powerful Islamic nation as well. And it's not Judaism. We have a very powerful, you know, Falasia Jews who have proved that they're the original seed of Abraham. Um, you know, we've, we, we, it's, it's not those things. It's, it's our cultural modalities that attach us to certain spiritual behaviors and spiritual, and we're not talking about voodoo. But if you heard Professor Small, then you would understand that some part of our um, culture was tradition and spiritual all at the same time. And once you rip that away from us, even if you give us religion, we're still missing some real core you know, values um, that came from a, a, a very divine place, something that was handed down. Um, like in our traditions, the boys and the girls, as they get to a certain age, when the women, girls became at that overlapping where they're becoming women, they start to have menstrual cycle. When the boys are going through their puberty and, the, they, and so forth, and, and girls going to puberty, boys going to the adolescence, you know, they start to get beard and pubic hair, manhood start to, you know, pop its head. Then at that time, they had these different paths of, you know, traditions where, you know, passed down from our ancestors that we would then have to be, you know, taken into the, 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 the manhood, you know, academy. And the, the, the womanhood academy, we explained to the woman, to the young woman, what is a period, what does it mean? And, and how to manage it and, and so forth. And the whole ideologies of sexual intercourse and sexual behavior. And she's becoming a woman, she's gonna grow breasts and hips and certain things, how she behaves in front of men. And all these type of tenets which starts is to be uh, you know, unfolded from mouth to ear, but we lost that. And so our core spiritual modalities became lost. And then we accepted whatever came through books but our, our practices was a living thing and we lost that. So um, I'm saying for the making or remaking of the black family, we're gonna need to reintroduce a spiritual foundation in any black family, or unfortunately we will be able to be dismantled and di divided again, yet again. Um, that, that's, that's where I wanna land with you and a spiritual, a spiritual oh. final spiritual um, catalyst that holds the family, that the boys don't go off and hit crack and the dad don't go off and, you know, and the mothers don't go off and wear a batty rider because she's getting an extra 20 pounds than her work if she does it on MTV and so forth and so forth. My brother, Andrew, Mohammed, bless you, brother. No, that brother, school brother. is, that school really, I am so, I mean, you know, brother, I, I have a school. I have a music school called yeah. Marder, London Marder Music and Dance Academy. We have some of the most talented young, you know, um, black and Asians, and we haven't got much yes. Caucasians, but we have some of the most uh, achieved in, in East London. It's in yes. Chigwell and in um, Barkingside, that side. My son runs the school. I opened the school years and years ago. I started it in my front room, and that's why I brought it up, not to boast. No, our you school, boast, brother, you boast. Our school, our school now oh. has a 100% success rate for over 30 years. My dad taught me piano. And I got taught by his teacher in Jamaica, Trelawney. And it was so old, the lady was so old, it was on one of those kind of organs that you have to pump it with your foot as you're playing. 
That's how <laughs> my first, yeah, you had to pump it with your foot as you're playing. I learned to play piano from a woman, an old lady that taught my dad in a place called Freeman's Hall. Anybody from Jamaica in the Tulani area, they would know Freeman's Hall. Anyway, um, the spiritual modality for me is the underpinning foundation that holds a family together. They eat together, they worship together. They have a part of the home that's for centrally um, looking upwards to the most high. And that for me is the saving grace to all the atrocities, even if it's with a bad mind man in the house, if he's sitting there by that altar that we would have in our tradition, somewhere there's, there's an altar that you have to bear witness that it's not just four walls in every room, that there's an altar somewhere. You're bearing witness that there's someone greater than the man of the house, the woman of the house, and that is the most high. He's still the king of every house. And that's what was missing from our um, family structure. And so they were able to infiltrate uh, I, I, and give us um, their ideologies. And, and, and then what you do with, with black history, without that, even, with, even, even someone that becomes a Christian or a Muslim or becomes a Jew, a black Jew, whatever, if you don't have history to support that, to support, like running parallel with that, that yes. those spiritual modalities like Christianity, whatever, it still falls short of that. You know, they're saying that you have to build a house, you have to build it on foundation, not yes. on a sandy foundation. This foundation's got to be solid, not sandy, you know, not rocky. It's got to be solid foundation. That's the most solid foundation to build, to make the black man's family or to remake and reestablish the black community. Wow, brother. I mean, brother, there is so much you dropped tonight. I'm not going to joke. So much you dropped tonight. And you know, brother, and it seems like standard. You know you're going to have to come back. You know well, I'll tell you what, 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 what probably needs to happen is we need to start with the same thing that system, you know, Dominique is saying. I think we need to, wow. we need to start the journey of the Sankofa. We need what to have the project, the project where women say, you know what? I do want to be the missus of the kitchen again, not just cooking the food because the husband's hungry. I want to know what to use if we, any of us get sick. Yes. You know, how you many ways, how many ways can you use bicarbonate soda? You need, women, you need to know all of them. You need to know all of them, you know? And so maybe what we should do, Baba Andrew, is set up that either training or seminar, yes. whatever works, that we can get a thousand women. Absolutely. Baba, I'm on board. A thousand I, I, women. Yes. If, men, if men want to participate because they understand that it's important to also know, you know, just like in the Caribbean and, and, and Africa, they make sure men are trained in cooking, washing, ironing the clothes, domesticated. So men yes. attend, but we need to get women back on the throne of the healing in the kitchen with the things that's in the house. So we don't need the GP. Don't need the GP. And don't okay. forget also, you see men, most men, their hands and arms and something is dropping off before they go to the GP. Yes. And it's always the woman that says, listen, you know, um, Joey, you know, uh, Johnny, don't you see? And I've been watching and I think it's time you go doctor now. Yeah. Otherwise, the man, he waits until the wheel fall off and he's driving <laughs> three wheels. Yes, sir. So the woman is still, in many ways, the custodian and the, oh, nourish, the nourisher, the nourisher to all the nation and in the home. She should still be the nourisher. Let's have a course. Let's have a seminar. Let's do something. Why don't we do this? Why don't we have a seminar where we charge but we, uh, we, I will arrange that we give the proceeds, some of the proceeds to your school. Brother, let's How about do that? It. How about we, that? We, we're let's talk and do us. something. Absolutely. Let's make it, let's make it, let's make it congruent that it does something for your school at the same time. Brother, you know? we bow. We let's bow. Do it. King. Let's do it. Let's we're do it. We're going to do it, King. We're going to do it. Let's Brother, do it. Brother, like Nike. There are so many, as you as you know, every time you come on the platform, brother, you drop bombs. And um, there are quite a lot of questions. You touched a few nerves. I know one of the nerves, one of the nerves I touched, one of the nerves I touched, I didn't want to go into in detail because black, black, men are black men are proud. You know, mm. I, was in, I was in the Bahamas and I was on a radio show 
with Jamal, Dr. Jamal Mankru, and I mentioned about black, black men being abused and boys being abused and how it impacted in their lives. And um, I got a phone call from a member of the um, government who heard the show. And he invited me, he came to see me at, doc, at Dr. Jamal's place. And when I started to speak, he said, no, that's it, that's it, forget it. Come to my house, bring all your equipment. Jamal, car, everything is done, bring him to my house. I went to the house and um, I scanned him and stuff like that with the machines. And we were there till three o'clock in the morning mm. because it came out that he also was um, sexually abused and it was affecting his relationship with his wife. And then the wife started to reveal some things that they were just on the verge of a divorce right now, just about to, until they heard my show and what I said, and maybe I can help him and maybe it can save their marriage. Um, they're still married today. And so I was happy to be of some help, but it does impact on relationships when, uh, even when men become abused. I have one, you know, one, one, um, oh, incident where the boy was abused by the head teacher. The head teacher took him to a derelict school and had all kind of sexual mm. stuff go on. And then, you know, then took him on his journey everywhere he went and, you know, he felt, kind of honored that he'd take him everywhere he went but it was part of the the deal of this abusive um relationship if you can call it that but men who get into these um i had one unfortunately he died because he was and i'm saying this just so men who know they have these issues that and they've had these scenarios our black men are more proud you know whether they become raped in prison or raped by uncle or raped by dad you know, um, I saw one case is significant, this one. He came to me as a, he's a, he's a doctor. He was a psychotherapist, psychiatrist, mm -hmm. working in a home, in a, 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 a mental home in Brixton. And he came to me saying that he was injured by one of the patients. But when I start to psychoanalyze him and get the medicines he need and fix him up, everything came well. He then came for another consultation and said, I'm fine, but I've come to talk to you about some things that I had never talked about and to anyone about. I was, a, I was raped by my uncle in Jamaica at Machete Point. Machete Point. He put the machete around my neck and raped me. Mm. And when I said to him, so did you go back to your uncle's house? He said, yes. I said, many times? He said, I went back. I said, did he do the same thing? He said, yes. And so at that point, I understood that there's a transition that happened with some of these men. And you know what happened? He got married, he had a child, and he somehow deviated to the background noise of his abuse personality, persona. And that persona went off into the internet looking for a sexual partner. He said to me that the reason he done it because he wanted someone else to feel the pain that he felt. He said, I'd pick up young men in the pubs in Brixton and elsewhere. He had locks. He had locks. Yes. He said, I'd pick up men. I mentioned it to show you the problem we have within the male side of these issues. And so you're never going to hear much about it. It's a it's silence. Never, it's a silence. And it's so he silence. picked up men and he carried on doing that until... He contracted AIDS and he, he went to America, tried to find ways to cure. He came back to me and said he had all the medicines. We put them into capsule, weighed them up and tried to help him. And unfortunately he died. And even his parents think he died from cancer, but he died from AIDS. And the person who gave him AIDS was back on the chat room on the whatever um, mating platform. And he reported them to the police and then they removed them from that platform. But that person had AIDS, HIV, and was spreading it to that community. So that's what happens when some of our people become you know, um, abused men as well. And it doesn't make an excuse for why we have men that are abusive in domestic violence and so forth. It doesn't make an excuse, but like Sister Dominic, as a therapist, as a practitioner, as a consultant, without that balanced way of looking at it. No judgment either way, 
you won't be able to bring about the true true, true healing and the um you know the the final you know um way of finally bringing an end to this you know conundrum which seemed to be circling around you know um that the abuse become the abuser your school is the biggest i want to say this and i'm done your school and any other school that that springboards and uh and take a page out of your book is here the word i'm going to use is the ma'adi is the messiah in our times and people are looking for the return of the yeshua the return of jesus return of any saint or messiah i am saying personally my opinion the return of the messiah for us as a people is education education it is Education is the return of our Messiah. Brother Doctor, we thank you. We fa Honestly, brother, we thank you. We thank you. Every morsel that comes out of your mouth is edific edification okay. for our body and our soul, brother. You give, I've never seen you give a lecture, a presentation, a workshop whereby you don't give 100% of who you are. You don't shoot change anyone. You don't say, yeah, well, I've done this a million times. I can do this. No, but you're the only one I know that can come out every single Friday on your radio show <laughs> and deliver for four to five hours. But I want you to look in that chat room, man. It's on fire because we, we, we reflect your love that you're giving back to us, brother. And I can't wait as we've been speaking to work behind the scenes on some really great... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you up on that seminar... A thousand, yeah. a thousand, a thousand in there. Yeah, a cinema. Get a cinema. We're going to do thousand. it, Hawking. We're going to yeah. do it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, my doctor. Brothers and sisters, this has been what a night, a hidden truth night. Wow, over 400 of you on laptops are still with us. We bow into the wisdom of our brother, our king, our soldier, Dr. Mark Walcott. We love this king. He's, he's on this show anytime, every time, yeah? And it's, it's just a shame that we, we didn't bring him on a bit earlier so we could do some questions and answers. I know that there was a lot of questions, a lot of answers, um, and um, our brother's always there to give it to us, okay, brothers and sisters? And so, again, like Sister Daniel, we're going to be writing him back. Lady Wisdom, mm. Sister, Dr. Walcott, has broken it down, my queen. The way you spoke tonight, I, I don't think, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think I've got the power, huh. the energy, the bravery, the courageous mm. to, to do what you do yeah. and be public on a platform and you do it with regal and no hatred in your heart, sister. You've been made a very special way. I want you to know that. You've been made a very special way. And who was that? Who was the person behind you there, sister? Was that your manager? That was Brother Kevin. Oh, Brother Kevin. Oh, gosh. One love, Brother Kevin, man. That's what happens, lovey. Guaguan, sir. Guaguan. Much love to you, King. Um, and that's your reward, beloved. You've gone through all of that, and you've got a man that's by 